Hello, everybody, and welcome on back to Minecraft Musings. Oh, actually, I think I know why. So these creatures are outside. Yeah, they're outside. And I think because this isn't actually closed right here, they can sense me, even with the door closed. Because normally they wouldn't be this, like, so they can path to me, basically. Um, to fix that, I'm not going to do it right now. Because what I'm going to do, <clears throat> well, first things first, let's take inventory. Do we have coal? Charcoal? Oh, that's right. My campfire blew up from a creeper. Sorry, a little, it's about to catch up. I played a little bit off camera just to kind of, you know, speed things up. Some of the more mundane things, but I don't know. Because uh, it's still a toss-up. I almost feel like I could just go ahead and keep recording all of it and then just muse as I go. Or there's certain things where it's like, okay, I want to get a task done and then I can, you know, but... In fact, let's uh, let's go ahead and expand our house. So what we were going to do is go up, but now I'm thinking we go down. And down a couple of, ooh, and also even as I say that, we got to be careful with that. So what I usually like to do is have some kind of block nearby. So we can maybe do this. Actually, let's go ahead and... So since we can't, or I was going to say... Well, now we can't sleep because it's daytime, but we still have a creeper out there. I did have a skeleton shooting some of my llamas. So basically, I need to make this place secure like we were doing with the other world before I stopped caring about my Microsoft login. So, no, that's not true. In fact, yeah, I don't know. Just thinking about that, it's just, it's annoying because like, yeah, you do IT all day and then it's like, ugh. I gotta fix my own. I like, come on. So that's okay though, because uh, speaking of that, ooh, actually, we don't even have coal to be doing this. <laughs> there we go. I think that works for that much. But what we should do? Yeah, we basically need coal badly. So we're gonna need to mine. Let's go ahead and. Uh, there we go. We also have this. Oh wait, that actually doesn't work. Sorry. Um, you can't... Hmm, let's see, how do I explain that? You can't have a solid block. Although these are stairs. Let me see. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. You shouldn't be able to do this because... Like if you did it here... See, you can't. You just can't do it. Because... And now that we said that, so this is a partial block and this is a solid block. So right there, we just did an experiment. You cannot open this chest, but this one's fine. So usually I do it the other way because that makes sense in my head. Like if you're Tetrising it and you flip this upside down to where the lid would almost clear it, but then it still inter intersects the bottom of it. Anyways, my point is I can go toss some stuff. You know, I'm really not too worried about it. Like, this will just be my junk drawer where everything goes for now. Oh, wait, wait. Mm, we'll keep that. Um, okay. So, hmm. Let's go ahead and sleep. <laughs> and then we need coal, basically. But anyways, IT thing. So... Um, horrible thing happened. I, so I gave my son my old Game Boy Pocket and Pokemon Red. So he's all getting into Pokemon now. And, you know, it's all really exciting. Well, he had a very horrible yet common experience for anyone who's in tech or IT. He, well, he, it was basically like he was testing in production and dropped the database. Dropped all the databases in production. <laughs> Um, he forgot to hit, or he accidentally deleted his game. He could only have the one saved game on those Game Boy games. And so, yeah. So he deleted the game, and he had to start all over from scratch. And he was just devastated. I could tell. He just crumpled up and like, oh, and it was just, it was horrible. Because we've been talking about it. I've been like discussing tactics and stuff from back when I did it. And, you know, and how, like, oh, you got to pay attention to the, the types of Pokemon. Like, you know, the water is good against fire, and fire is good against grass, earth type, and... 
you know, and it's like that's the whole point of the game is you kind of like learn to basically dogfight, which is kind of the messed up thing because like, you know, and I say that I would never condone dogfighting in real life, but the idea of like virtual animals that don't actually exist always appealed to me because then it's like, you know, because I knew it was fake. And like if I saw that animal in real life, which was kind of weird with like the Detective Pikachu stuff, because when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's kind of, I mean, it's cool, but... Now I'm like, I don't want them to really fight because if you really did like horn attack or scratch or anything like that, like they bleed and stuff like, you know, that, that really hurts. Them. So sorry, I'm not trying to laugh at that, like to make light of that. I'm just saying like, you, I don't, I wouldn't really want to see that. That's dog fighting or chicken fights or, you know, we have a lot of that. We, that's bum fights. And yes, I have watched that back in the day and I, you know, I'm ashamed of it now, but like the Coliseum, you think about that, like, you know, our ancestors, well, old people, people in the olden times. You know, it's human nature for some reason to just see, like, violence. I, I guess, like, the curiosity of, you know, but with technology and with, you know, entertainment, we don't have to worry about that. Same with, like, you know, superhero things. Like, we, we don't have to ever worry about actually doing any of that. I mean, you know, hopefully n none of those, like, horrible situations ever happen. But, oh, at the same time, this is not a good place to be. There's not going to be coal down there. That's a waste of time. And... Oh, no, that doesn't do anything. Uh, this is really getting painful. <laughs> we need to... Alright, you know what? We've already taken it out of things. Let's just... So I was going to say, like, it's good to mine if you have coal. I don't know. I was thinking, like... And that was the other thing we came up with, was, like, Game, Game Genie. We were looking into, how, like, that and how to go about that. Those things are, like, 45 bucks. And I'm not about to drop 45 bucks on a Game Boy that probably cost, like, half of that brand new to begin with back in the, you know, I don't know. But, like, or maybe that's how much it cost brand new back in the day, but of that time's dollars. I don't know. But, like, you think about Nintendo systems were about a couple hundred, and the Switch is, like, 300 brand new. And then PlayStations are, like, you know, more ridiculous, like, six or 700. But, I mean, then again, they're also, like, fit to do more things, too. Like, you can actually watch blu-rays and stuff on these things and there's still a dvd player for like so even just that i don't know and i don't work for sony i just happen to hey you know what we're gonna slightly cheat so this is gonna be the slight like game genie what we're gonna do well we're gonna go to our junk drawer and drop off like everything we can still put those there we'll put it into peaceful We'll only do this during mining times. I mean, we, we won't cheat, like, put it in creative and give ourselves, like, a whole stack of things, but we'll still do the work, you know, mine for the stuff, but we're just taking away the element of danger that is entertaining, but at the same time, not necessary 24-7. Like, go play Fortnite if you're trying to, like, you know... <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like there's other ways. Like, it's an additional challenge, yes, I get it, but... I feel like that's part of the game's just versatility in general. Actually, wait, where do we need to... This looks good. Oh, you know what? I guess we, uh... Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna need to go back and get the torch, but... Or you know what? Never mind this. We put it in peaceful. We're gonna go mob that cave. Sorry, we'll... You know, it's weird because there's certain bragging rights in playing video games without cheating. But then, like, there's also about the experience of it. Because I had a Game Genie for regular Nintendo. I mean, I'll be the first to admit it. Yeah, I cheated on games. But first, I tried it without. I gave it the good, honest try. Like, you know, play, with, play it. At least try to beat it without any cheats. And I've beaten Minecraft without cheats. So, um, in fact, I didn't even like creative for the most part. I mean, it, it is fun. I like it, but I, I really enjoy mining and crafting and harvesting and like the little meaningless tasks that together, you know, it's, I don't know. But then I can appreciate the people like, uh, what was that, Wadzi? Yeah, Wadzi. I, I watched a bunch of his videos and he did um, a lot of really cool uh, 
Actually, I'm trying to think. I'm subscribed to him on the YouTubes, but I haven't seen him post anything for a while. But that's the thing is, like, I'm subscribed to a lot of people. So every now and then I have to, like, go through and check to see, like, if there's been any more activity and whatnot. And, like, but. Hmm. And I keep talking. Oh, sorry. If I kind of finish off the. Let's see, make sure, okay, yeah, we're only ten and a half minutes in. I make sure I don't completely forget, and I did, yes, I do have an alarm for 33 minutes. The good old, um, 33rd degree Freemason. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So you could read the books um, by Dan Brown and learn all about, what was that, the lost symbol, or the symbol. I think it's just the symbol. Um, also, I'm kind of tempted to, oh, watch this, the, this is dangerous. So you'll see like the stuff's falling down and like if it's not actually attached, so this shouldn't exist. Like you should not be able to look up at gravel. So once I do this, it's all gonna fall down. Oh, and is it gonna yeah, it's gonna break the torch. Plunging us into darkness. No, I'm just kidding. The torch actually breaks gravel. Um, <laughs> so that's why I was just the the loading message said place a torch at your feet when digging straight up. And like, I was like, yeah, that's true, but imagine, well, first off, just don't dig straight up. I mean, you can always dig slightly to the right. I mean, if you're trying to get up here, you know, dig here. So if it falls or if the water comes out or whatever, you know, or lava, especially in the nether, because if yeah, that's kind of setting you up for failure, actually, because then you could be in the nether. And if you dig straight up there, see, you just it's best to develop good habits. <laughs> Sorry, it's. It's best to develop as many good habits as you can. There you go. Because that's the other thing, too. I feel like I know a lot of people, like, I grew up religious especially. The kind of depression sets in and, like, feelings of shortcomings are falling, yeah, falling short. Anxiety, despair, all that. There's a lot of that because they feel like they're failing if they're not, like, spitting images of Jesus. And I imagine that's similar with uh, Muhammad. But I know that's a touchier subject. Like, it's very offensive to... Um, show pictures of them, stuff like that. Uh, and I get that. That goes back to the throughput. Like, I mean, what seems outrageous now, and granted, like, that might, you know, over time, I, th I feel like that's going to smooth over to where, I'm not saying, like, we should start joking about that kind of stuff. Same with, you know, I feel bad. Wow. Well, any kind of joking needs to kind of be kept in check to a point. But at the same time, you know, that's a whole can of wax, actually, that, uh, Let's focus on, we were getting coal. So we have some coal. Let's get some torches. And then let's actually do some mining. Let's leave, uh, I don't know. I kind of want to leave this lit up, but at the same time not because it's a fun place to fight mobs. I suppose if I ever change my mind, I could just turn it into peaceful and then go light it up. That's totally an option. So, but for now, we're just going to do some peaceful mining, gather resources, and get ready to go slay the ender dragon. Like, we need diamonds. We need stuff like that. We need... I'm tired of this, like, because uh, this is like what it's like living paycheck to paycheck. You just, you know, every now and then you have to go back, go hustle and grind. <clears throat> and then you have to save up and store and all that. But, uh, life. Life as a summary. Okay. So we're going to put that there. Hmm. We don't have sticks anywhere. Wood. No wood? Sticks, there we go. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Let's drop that off. I mean, that's good. We've got some... Yeah, I need to organize. Let's see, I don't need sticks now. Or that. Probably some more. Oh, actually, I do need sticks. Because I need... There we go. Actually, I feel like you know what? No, see, like right here, I was thinking if like an upside down stair would do that. The easiest way to just do that, fix that, would be what was the other one I started doing? Just regular cobblestone. There. <laughs> Actually, no, it's, um, so what I was originally thinking, which I think I'm going to go with. There. 
So now that was what I was thinking for like this one, but I was like, no way would it fit there. And even if I could go through, that would just look so bad. But now this is like it molds to it. In fact, I should even do. Ah, but will that make oof? It's a partial. Oh. <laughs> there. We're just gonna do that. In fact, let's go ahead and do this, because while we're at it, I do like the, the three-wide staircase. So let's go ahead and get prepared for that, and then, I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, for now, we don't need stairs. We don't need the extra blocks. Let's put a few pickaxes down. And... So this is dangerous if I don't, like, block it off or something. And so... At least so I don't forget it's at this safe. Well, and... For the little zombie children. <laughs> okay. So now that that's taken care of, did we have a... I don't think we were doing anything specific, but we could go... I don't know, I don't want to get into the habit of... Let's actually just go leave one of those. There. Oh, and I do need a shovel. Dang it. <laughs> oh well, we'll try to just go this way for now. Nope. See, these things we learn. All right, never mind. Let's just mine closer to the top so we don't have to keep doing this back and forth. And then for now, I'll just plug the holes. Ah, oh, it just it seems so inefficient. There we go. Let's burn through that one and then... I mean, we have it now, so let's just... There we go. Nice. Okay, now I just need to be smarter about this too. And like, and I guess like refill on supplies when it gets to it. But anyways, I'm sorry. <laughs> Got way distracted. So you know, as kind of like a parenting tip, if you have something like that happen to your kiddo and like they lose their save game, which is going to happen some way or another, your your save is going to become corrupted or, you know, something like that. Or there's going to be some technical issue or someone's going to spill water on something or, you know, any number of issues. So the thing I did with this one is I actually, you know, he left the Game Boy here. So um, he went over to his other house. But like, it's like, all right, cool. So I just went ahead and played it, got his Pokemon up to a decent level. I might go sit down with it some more. Because um, he was about to evolve a Charmander into a Charizard. So that's a pretty big moment for anyone who's played Pokemon. And so, like, you know, so I got his Charmander up to a level 12 or no, 13. And then it evolves to Charmeleon at 23 or 26, I think, because we just looked it up. And then Charizard is like 36. So, I mean, granted, he had quite a bit of time into that thing. So, oh, yeah, it's just, it's heartbreaking. Because, I mean, I remember when I was a little kiddo and I was playing that thing, and it was just like, it took me forever, and I got, um, I don't think I got all the Pokemon, but I got a lot of them. And then, of course, like, I moved on to the next thing, I think it was Magic the Gathering, but, you know, there's a long time there where, you know, I had to catch them all. So, and then I missed the one episode, and I'll never forget that. So, it was actually, actually after I ran the Autumn Color Run up in Buena Vista, one of the years I got the first place for men's overall. It was so weird, like, it, it was just for the mile. And I think it was because, like, I was mas bas mostly running against other kids and, like, out of shape people. And, like, you know, there was very low expectations. So, but I got first place out of every every male in Buena Vista. So, for that, for the rate, for the one mile. I mean, granted, like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, I don't know. But it's not like no Michael Phelps winning, like, multiple gold medals, like, in year after year. 
So, good old Michael Phelps, very famous, the most decorated Olympian in all of uh, world history. So, anyways, um, no, so I got that. <clears throat> I got a char, the Charmander's up, and then I got a Nidorino, the male one. Um, or no, it's a. The, the basic one, Nidoran, or I think it's Nidoran, and then Nidorino and Nidorina are the middle level evolution, and then Nido King and Nido Queen, of course, are the final evolutions of that. And I could have gotten the Nidoran female, but I mean, my son, so I figured maybe he wanted the. Of course, that's an assumption based on like whole gender stereotypes and all that stuff, because I don't know. I'm not trying to push it on him or anything, but like. I just tried to do what I wanted. So, and I know I went with the Nidoran, wanted to get the Nido King. Um, so, anyways. We also got a Pidgey and a, Rat, a, a Ratata, or Ratata. I forget how it's pronounced. but And then I kept the, Rat, the Ratata low level because you kind of want something to tap it in when you're trying to catch Pokemon. So you need kind of like a weak one. Because uh, you can't just sledgehammer your way through all of them. Like, and, and the other thing is, is you need a team of Pokemon, and that's what the game teaches you. I mean, aside from that, it's basically like dogfighting. But like, hold on. and it's kind of brutal too. So when you first start out, like you don't really get a lot of guidance. You're just walking around talking to people. You go to talk to Professor Oak. You go against your rival, which I, I named him, uh, well, no, we'll keep that. Maybe that'll be a reveal down the way, if the kiddos or I have a YouTube thing like that. But anyways, no, um, the tactic is, is like, so you get your first Pokemon, you're like, all right, cool. And then you have to go fighting, and then you just faint. You just fight and fight and fight, and then you, like, you black out. If your Pokemon faints, although then I realized that's just one way to play the game because I was getting all excited to train it, and I think that happens to a lot of people because like by accident, kind of too. Like I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be their intention, but just the way that most people are is like, okay, I'm gonna go train a Pokemon. I gotta go fight it. Ooh, I'm gonna keep leveling it up and leveling it up. Uh oh, wait, it's about to faint. Uh oh, I need to go find like a hospital or a Poke Center or whatever. And that's even if you know what a Poke Center is. If you have no idea, like a lot of kids when they first started out with Pokemon Red or Blue, like they had no idea what any of this was. So it's like, okay. And so, actually, I guess that's true because even my own son, this is his first Pokemon game. So, anyways, my point is, <laughs> I, I, my way that I did it is I. I mean, there's no point. This is just me saying my tactic. Is I just fought him until he fainted, and then I, I blacked out a couple of times and just kept waking up at the house. <laughs> like, yes, we're gonna keep training, keep training. Like, you know, because it's just very mechanical. I know none of it's real. Like, I wouldn't have an animal fight in real life like that, not even once. But if it's a game, yeah, like it's it's fake. So uh, that's. And I think that's why, like, a lot of the older generation are so worried about video games and stuff, too. Because it's the same with, like, even Call of Duty. Even if it's very hyper-realistic, like, you know, there's a famous meme out there, like, oh, yeah, I'm a general on Call of Duty or something. And, like, someone's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm, like, a, a so-and-so in the real world or something, like, which barely outranks anything. But even the lowest, like, private in the military would outrank anyone in a video game ranking like that's just ridiculous like that's not <laughs> although granted i say that but drone pilots unfortunately like that is kind of an example where yes you could be deadly by playing video games but other than that no i think it's a great healthy outlet for aggression uh, for myself included like i think everybody should have access to video games um but also be uh do other things too like balance life is all about healthy balance and of course, I'm still working on that too. Trying to keep like physical exercise in the life. I mean, I used to live in the gym back when I did sports because I was like expected and you made time out of your day to like go to the gym. And so, or like two a days, my gosh, like ugh, I'd have like two practices in a day. Yeah, it was brutal. Another thing that's going to be a little different though, like I loved playing football, but I got to wonder like the head injuries and stuff and you hear these reports like it's a very, it's a very violent game. So... I'm not really letting my own kids play it. So that's kind of a double standard that we're going to figure out a different solution, though. I mean, I'm all about encouraging them to play team sports. Like, 
you know, or even just like intellectual teams. It's going to be a little harder too because I grew up in a small town where if you showed up enough, like as long as you showed up, you know, not a participation trophy, but like you still got the glory of being on the football team because especially alignment, like that's not the most glamorous by any means. I just, I did hit someone every, every down, every inning, every, or not every inning, every quarter. <clears throat> it's not baseball, but. And and that was the fun thing. It's like I didn't have to learn anything about like the plays and stuff for, for the most part. Like the quarterback and the the wide receiver and all this, and they would just have all these things. I'd be like, all right, loop de loop, and have a good day to you too. Like, you know, I just like, what do I need to know for this? Okay, okay, I'm good. Like, you know, <laughs> and I didn't care to learn anything else because I wasn't trying to be a quarterback or a wide receiver. I was like, no, nah, it doesn't even sound fun. Like, you know, it's a lot of pressure. Like. <laughs> It's a lot of glory, but a lot of pressure too. So I was comfortable just being a lineman. So that's pretty much like me in a summary. I mean, I'll do fantastic and amazing things, but within my comfort level. That's how everybody should too. I mean, and I think we all want to be that way, <clears throat> but there's so many factors like stress and just the world. Like, you know, it's. Well, the stresses of the world, basically. The stressors of life, the stressors of success, the stressors of failure, the stressors of what's real and perceived success or failure. Um, both of it, like all of it. It's like, you know, because perception is reality. Oh, yeah, I never finished that <clears throat> last video. So my dad had a Zippo with uh, the phrase, perception is reality. And that's just really deep because, and it's true. Like, you are going to your life is going to be a direct reflection of your environment, your reality, and how you perceive that reality too. Like, because some people, if their needs are already met early on, or like they have stable families, or um, like just enough, well, let's see, I say that, but just because you don't have money doesn't mean you can't have a stable environment. It just means that you're going to have to be a little more creative with your problem solving. And that's why you generally see, like the Prince and the Pauper, a bunch of our famous like stories and stuff. Like, there was parts in that where it was just like the blind spots for the prince the prince saw ways to solve problems that he didn't even know those problems existed because he lived in a sheltered you know royal uh, setting environment and we're slowly very slowly getting away from that we still have that a lot especially with capitalism i mean i love capitalism but at the same time i hate it because like hollywood i think is what basically broke our economy um, because we got unrealistic expectations for if you go to Hollywood, if you make it big, it's like basically winning the lottery or the jackpot or the gold rush, like any of the number of times that we've tried to take the fast track to get a chance at not having to work. Like, you know, because we all work. Like, nobody doesn't work. If you go to public school, you work. If you don't go to public school, you work. <clears throat> Granted, because and, and that whole thing with Jean Valjean stealing bread to feed his family, that's the thing that I find absurd because that kind of implies that people do that for a living, for a regular thing. Like they just keep stealing, keep stealing, keep stealing. Like I don't care how good you are, you cannot survive alone on just stealing. Like you can't. You never could. That was a common misconception that like the life of crime, it, you know, people will say it, that crime doesn't pay, you know, like, oh yeah, that's a great bumper sticker or whatever. Like that would be a great meme. But aside from that, no, crime really doesn't pay because even if you get away with it like the first time or the second time or even the third, 300th time, just kidding, nobody makes it that far. But especially in the day and age of technology, like if the crime wants to be pursued completely like that, then people can almost find out every single last thing just from like traffic cameras and credit card transactions and your cell phone's GPS and all of these things that like they can see where you're at, what you're doing, who you're doing it with. Like there is no privacy, but and that's kind of a double edged sword. And Batman approaches that in one of their movies where it's like, you know, Morgan Freeman retires. He's like, after I'm done with this, I, you know, I resign. I, I refuse to do this. And now that, that's been an ethical thing. Is like now that we have access to everybody's text messages, Snapchat, not me, mind you. I don't care. I'm not in law enforcement. I don't care to be. And even if I was in law enforcement, I wouldn't want to be on that assignment because, and we even have um, algorithms now because I might see something messed up or something that I'm not ready to see, you know, or something that I don't want to see, something that I, offends me. Basically, like, um, they have a fancy name for it, acronym now, but when, when we were studying digital forensics, that was my big thing. It was just like, I was like, ah, no, I don't, you know, because I don't want to stumble across some kind of messed up image. Like, 
just it upsets me. It always has, but I don't know. Anyways. And that's also part of environment, too, because, like, hanging around enough people that have dealt with being in the system and stuff, there's a general attitude against people that commit sex offenses. Like, that's just the thing. And so, but it's it's a human problem, and, you know, as, as annoying and as angering as it is, it is something that needs to be fixed. And, again, with all human problems, I'm saying preventative maintenance. So, like, preventative, oh, that's why. Sorry, the other day I tagged the Pope in something on the Twitters. I swear, like, I mean, I hope I don't get, like, I mean, it's not offensive. Like, it is, it's a, it's a thought. Um, but it could be seen as offensive, so I don't know. But I don't, it's a, whew. The point is, is premaritals in both religions, Islam and Christianity, uh, if they were both updated, because I can't remember if, um, I'd have to check with my buddies, because I do have a bunch of, uh, Muslim friends, but, like, um, so I can just ask and be like, hey, hey, what's, uh, what's the answer to 25? No, I'll just be like, oh, hey, is this, or what, what do they think about this? Of course, I could also ask my buddy Google, like, you know. <laughs> but I like to talk, like, to them about it because they can actually, like, explain why or, like, give some backstory and all of the things that, like, you know, it's the benefits that you get from talking with people from different walks of life. You get to see their perspective and weigh in their input because... Otherwise, you're trying to problem solve with problems that you might not fully understand. <coughs> so, I don't know. And, like, the whole... The, oh. That's it for this one. I gotta figure out... Yeah. Yeah. I'll do one more, and then I'll go to the store. Because I was about to get into some pretty heavy stuff there. And, like, basically, religion and stuff... Yeah, let's go ahead and stop there. This is actually, like, 33... Or no. Because it's 33 minutes minus the time that it takes me to load into the world and all that. So it took me about a minute and some change. But anyways, until next time, we got to keep these bite-sized anyway. Because if I just ramble for like an hour at a time, it's a bit much, even for myself. So I will see you in the next one. Ta-ta.